Hello everyone, my name is Roberto and this is going to be episode 2 of uh, this Japan podcast. Still don't know what I'm going to name it. Um, so in this episode, um, I will try to talk a little bit about accommodation. Which is the hardest thing to do here in Japan. Now, um, first time I've been here, uh, you've... Uh, Listen to the podcast episode one, giving uh, everyone a bit of a context about who am I and how I got here. I've been here uh, before with uh, a student or a foreign exchange student visa, uh, and I stayed at a share house, uh, which was a different story. Share houses uh, are easier to get, and uh, you can get them with uh, short-term visas, because half a year is uh, considered a short-term visa. This time I'm with a three-year working visa, and I can hire an apartment, or a mansion, or flat, call it what you want it, even a house if I wanted to. Now, accommodation. You should basically start looking for accommodations online um, just um, I think Gaijinpot has a really good one, let me just check uh, again I'm going to probably include all the links that I mentioned above, uh, below or above where there will be a description uh, for this uh, podcast uh, basically there's a site with Gaijinpot as well uh, apartment.gaijinpot.com uh, which is which actually says foreigner friendly properties for rent near wherever Tokyo. Uh, now you should pretty much look for companies uh, that are listed there. Uh, I have had them uh, looked up separately. Like there's a company called best estate best dash estate dot jp property listing for foreigners in feature. They really, they, they were also nice. Um, the Agharta, so it's A G. Uh, sorry, H. Uh, G. No, let me start this again. A, G H A R T A Agharta. Uh, that's. Uh, yeah, I'm just going to include them. Description: Aonisin, uh, Kimi. GTM, which is Global Trust Networks, JF Plaza, Tokyo Apartment, Japan Room Finder, CowCowHomes.com, <laughs> Tokyo Best Realtors. Um, that's pretty much it. And you can also check out uh, Craigslist, uh, Tokyo.Craigslist.jp for apartments. Um, you should. Pretty much uh, start looking for some of those. Most of them won't be available by the time you come to Japan. Maybe they won't be even available the next day. Because uh, especially this time of, of the year, uh, March and April, it's pretty much uh, the apartment changing season. Uh, people usually look for new apartments this time around. Because it's, well, you've survived the winter and uh, now it's time for spring kind of thing. Uh, what I did is uh, I started looking out for them a couple of months ago, just trying to gather as much information, educate myself on what's key money, what's uh, agency fee, what's deposit, uh, how much is the initial cost for an apartment. Uh, and I will talk about that a little bit later. But there are better podcasts uh, with more professional people covering that. I think Gaijinpot specifically has a whole, I think one hour long, maybe, podcast uh, with a specialist person as a guest. And uh, he is talking about, well, they are talking about all these terminologies and uh, all the ups and downs and uh, problematic situations that you can encounter. I'm going to tell you my experiences and how I did it. Uh, so I said, I started to look out for these companies, check them out, get myself educated a couple of months. 
before I went to Japan. A couple of days before I went to Japan, I started to email these companies, these, these agencies uh, in Japanese. You can probably do this in English as well. Some of uh, the agents do speak really good English as well, even though maybe it's not stated as such. Uh, you could still pretty much uh, write them in English. Uh, there were cases where I wrote them in Japanese and they've... Um, They've, they've just fought to reply to me in English. Whatever. Uh, I had really strict conditions. Like, you should also try to think of what you hate and what you like in a, in a, a rental apartment. Me, personally, I was looking for top floor apartments, which is Saijoukai. Uh, that means top floor apartment uh, in Japanese. Uh, the reason for is that I hate to hear uh, the sound of the neighbor upstairs you know, running around in the apartment. I, I, I just can't be helped. I, I don't like it. I don't like it. Uh, that was one of my conditions. Uh, so you should also think about what you hate and what you don't want. Like, how far would you like to commute? How far are you willing to live from uh, the company? Because obviously your life is going to be uh, waking up, getting ready for work, commuting to work, working, going back home, and then uh, using uh, what time's left for sleep, entertainment, uh, drinking alcohol at a bar, your choice. But you have to remember, uh, and this is this is with all big cities. Uh, the farther away you live outside the city, the cheaper it gets. Uh, which is pretty much true in Tokyo as well. Uh, you can get really expensive flats uh, in uh, uh, the most central part of uh, Tokyo. Not to mention Roppongi and Ginza, which are just hilarious. Even for a for a smaller flat, uh, well, but if you're rich, then go ahead. <laughs> but if you're not rich, uh, as me, uh, you might wanna consider maybe twenty to thirty minutes commuting time. Uh, me personally, I do not like commuting. I hate it. Uh, the first time I've been here in Japan, I I actually lived one train station away from uh, the workplace. Uh, which was really good because I didn't even have to. Well, I didn't even uh, have to um, waste my money on uh, on train tickets, which are not expensive. But uh, when you calculate them into your daily living costs, it can add up quite quickly. I just checked if I was recording, and I am good now. Mm, other conditions that you might want to consider is uh, room size. Now, uh, there are different types of apartments, and I'm, I'm not going to enlist them all, but the ones I was looking at, uh, the smallest one you can get is 1R when it comes to apartments only. Like, I'm not including share houses and stuff, but uh, apartment wise, 1R, which means one room. It is basically, as it says, one room. Uh, well, then the next step uh, is 1K, one kitchen. The difference between 1R is 1K is that 1R also has a kitchen... Mm, kitchen... Uh, unit, let's go to unit, uh, in the same room as your bedroom or living room. Basically, the way you have to imagine this is uh, your living room, your bedroom, uh, your dining room, your kitchen are all say are, are all in the same room. One R is smaller. Usually, it's around ten uh, square meters, uh, while one K means it's more than that. It's between fifteen to twenty-five. Square meters. 
Uh, now, if you want to know how big you want your room, uh, basically 10 square meters uh, is a normal sized bed plus um, a desk. And uh, that's pretty much it. <laughs> you won't have any more space in your room. And that's uh, how I lived in a share house back in the days. Uh, this time around, like right now, uh, my situation is this. The company that I work for was so was was kind enough to offer me a room, well, a, an apartment for for one month until I find my own apartment. Uh, most companies do that, and uh, this apartment is actually, I think it's a it's a one k, because uh, the kitchen is right behind me, and I'm uh, I'm in the bedroom. <laughs> Uh, I'm in the bedroom, living room, dining room. Um, however, it could be around 20 square meters because there are actually two uh, normal sized beds fit in there, and there's even a little corridor between those beds, and uh, there's a veranda, uh, there's one window on the side, uh, an air conditioner. I mean, it's, it's, it's fully furnished though. They're fully furnished. It has uh, a lot of closets where you can put stuff into, where you can put stuff away. Uh, there's a small refrigerator. Um, there is no space for, um, for a washing machine. There's actually, actually a washing machine outside on the veranda, but it seems broken, so I didn't even uh, bother to check up on it. It's very dirty. Uh, this... Um, this building has a coin washer downstairs that I, I'm going to use, which means that uh, for each wash, I have to, well, it's, it's going to cost me each washing uh, 200 yen, plus uh, the washing uh, liquid or material, whatever, which I haven't bought yet. Regardless, back to the room uh, or back to the apartment, uh, it's a big room. And uh, the shower and toilet are together in one unit, uh, right next to this room. There's a little uh, genkan that they call, which is um, uh, what's the right? It's like a hall. Like that's the first little room you step into once you enter the the apartment. And there are closets basically everywhere in the Genkan and uh, near the kitchen unit. Mm, the flooring is uh, really good. Basically, uh, quite modern flooring. F flooring, it's a carpet. And um, I'm not sure how much I would have to pay for this one if I, if I had to pay for it. Um, the company said that I don't have to pay the rent. I might have to pay the utilities, gas, electricity, whatever. Uh, but uh, I'm going to talk about that once I know the details. For now, I can live here uh, free. And uh, my only concern is uh, to find a flat uh, one month from now, actually. And move into that flat because I will have to... Uh, leave this uh, company flat in a month or so. Uh, with that said, uh, we're right back to searching for apartments. Now, if, you've, uh, if you're already in Tokyo, you can try to uh, negotiate with these agents or realtor companies to send you some, uh, some samples or uh, or uh, or properties that fit your criteria. Now, I had really strict criteria, as I said, I wanted to look at um, top floor, apartment, 1R, 1K, so around, uh, fifth, so, yeah, around 15 to 20 square meters, and uh, I'm on a budget of uh, 60 to 90 thousand yen. Which is quite uh, affordable, even with my salary right now, which is not high at all. Um, and uh, what else conditions did I have? Yeah, I didn't want to commute 
more than 30 minutes away from uh, my workplace. Um, and uh, because Tokyo is pretty much, uh, well, to Tokyo has a lot of uh, metro lines and train lines. They are really fast and uh, everything works like a, like a dream. Uh, it's really easy to commute. Still, I wouldn't like to commute more than 30 minutes and uh, most of the agents did understand that they were usually asking they, they're going to ask you which region or which ward you want to live in uh, to be honest uh, because I'm going to work in Shinjuku I'm uh, well the neighboring uh, wards that are uh, that are in question for me are Tsukinami uh, it's a very nice uh, um, uptown place uh, uh, in the outskirts. Well, I wouldn't say outskirts of the city because this is still Tokyo. This is still Tokyo is just not the skyscraper district. Um, plus, the other district you want to look at is uh, called Nakano. Uh, Nak Nakano is uh, is really. Uh, popular district to live in. It's uh, really huge, it's, uh, it's really nice, calm, laid back, uh, with really good routes and uh, even buses and uh, quite a few metro lines and train lines. I would suggest you look at Tsuginami or, uh, or Nakano because they are pretty much uh, quite close to Shinjuku and quite quite close to quite close for you to get on uh, JR Yamanote line and just go around the city. Uh, even if you work uh, in Shibuya or uh, maybe deeper in Shinjuku or Ueno, or maybe you work uh, somewhere to the eastern part of Tokyo, your main go-to uh, train line is JR Yamanote because that will take you around the city literally. Um, and it's fast. It's really fast. I think you can go a full round, round town in 40 minutes, 45 minutes, if I'm not mistaken. Yep. Uh, let's see what else. So yeah, next. Uh, so I got a few options from most of the agents. Some of the agents were bitchy about it. Some of the agents didn't even reply to me, but most of them were inclined to schedule an interview uh, with me. So I would go to the office and they would uh, fill out a kind of paper with uh, my wishes and my uh, and my conditions, like how much money do I want to spend on uh, Yachin, which is rent. Um, do I want to pay key money? Do I want to... Uh, how much maintenance fee is involved? Like, um, yeah, because uh, okay, I think it's time to talk about the money. Uh, first, you have the rent, obviously, that you have to pay because it's not your apartment, you're renting it. Then there's also a thing called key money, which is, uh, I just call it uh, bribe, which is technically as it is. Uh, there's agency fee, which I feel better uh, to pay uh, the more I I spend uh, looking for good flats and good realtors because imagine that uh, you have a, a person an agent who tries to really look for apartments that fit your needs and if he or she really puts in the work and gets you what you want then uh, there is like I personally don't feel like I shouldn't give that person some extra cash, let's say, for her work. And it's usually around half a month to one month rent, which is a lot of money, but if that person gets you what you want, then I feel better about agency fees than key money, which is basically just bribe. And that has a historical reason to it why there is a thing called key money, which I don't want to go into. <clears throat> there are better podcasts that uh, explain it explicitly. Now, what else do we have there? Oh, and of course, there's deposit. 
which is usually one month amount of deposit. The Kibbana is also one month, by the way. So one month deposit, uh, which is refundable, which means if you break something uh, that comes off of that deposit, like uh, if if you're a dirty person and uh, you got uh, mud all over the wall, uh, you might uh, have to say goodbye to the whole of your deposit because uh, some of the uh, the, the owners uh, like to repaint their apartment fully and just use up the deposit because they <laughs> they just <laughs> well they can basically they can. Um, there's also a thing uh, which is cleaning fee, so that you have to pay once you move into an apartment. Uh, there's an initial cleaning cleaning fee which you just cannot say no to. Like, uh, just can't say no. I'm going to clean this apartment myself. No, no. You just, I just have to bow down and accept that that's the way it is. Cleaning fee, which is, I've seen cleaning fees around twenty to thirty thousand yen. Uh, and there's also insurance, fire insurance. That's also around 10 to 20 uh, yen per contract. Uh, sorry, 10 to 20,000 yen per contract. Uh, which again, uh, contracts are usually two years. That's the reason why uh, short-term visas can't really um, rent these apartments because the minimum uh, um, Lease time is two years. I've seen a few apartments that had one year, but that's really rare. And yeah, if you have a long-term visa for me, for for example, myself, I have three years now, three years of visa, which can be renewed again without going back to my 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 home country. Uh, yeah, so two years, two years definitely. And one more cost is. Uh, that some uh, agencies charge you, some don't, is the the key changing uh, fee, which well lock changing fee, basically means that yeah you get a a, a fully new lock with a with a key. Uh, that's just for your own security because you know the the previous um, tenant. Uh, sorry, uh, so the the getting tired. Uh, the previous person who rented the flat might have copied the keys and uh, thus could come back anytime to rob you, probably. That's the reason why there is this mandatory key changing fee. Uh, these are fees that you cannot say no to. Like, if you say no, then they, they're just going to say, well, okay, then <laughs> don't rent our flat. Uh, I haven't been able to argue with the agents much, and I'm not the type of person, but uh, there is no bargaining uh, with these people uh, like the owners have uh, have these uh, strict rules and uh, if you don't obey then you can go and uh, search for an apartment somewhere else they don't mind because they know that somebody else will take it I mean Tokyo right now has 36 million people I imagine that like <laughs> there's a lot of uh, going on uh, in the city and it's really big. So right now, I'm uh, I've I've looked at a few properties, and uh, I had uh, one property that I really liked. It was actually a two DK, which means it's a it had a Western style room, a six Joe Western style room, which is um, six Joe is. Uh, Mm, it means six um, standard tatami uh, flooring uh, units can fit in that room. Uh, how big is that? I'm not sure. I think it's around 10 square meters, maybe 15. I think six Joe might be 10 to 12, but don't quote me on that. Uh, so it had a Western style room, six Joe. It had a uh, Japanese or Eastern style uh, room uh, again six Joe and it had a because it was a two DK uh, that means two rooms plus a dining kitchen which is a, basically a different uh, room a separate room for a bigger kitchen 
plus the toilet separate and uh, bathroom separate. That was uh, for 80,000 yen. No maintenance fee. Uh, I forgot. Maintenance fee. Maintenance fee is basically uh, a plus that you have to pay every month outside of the rent, which is for maintaining the building itself. And that particular property had no maintenance fee, which was um, which I, I, I found really strange. At the same time, I understood why. Uh, it was a wooden building uh, and uh, the reason why I didn't take it was that it was first floor and uh, right when I I was looking at the property uh, little children were running up and down uh, in the in the neighbor like uh, the neighbor above me uh, and, uh, well I told the agent like I don't like that and she completely understood uh, it's understood that but uh, let's make a little bit of calculation here and there's one more fee that I, I forgot which is basically your utilities so you have to pay so if I if I took that property I had I would have had to pay 80,000 yen for um, for the rent itself so the first month's rent no maintenance fee this time which is usually around 5,000 to 10,000 but it can vary quite more quite much uh so and then i would have paid 40,000 yen for the agency fee 20 uh sorry 80,000 yen again for the key money another 80,000 for the deposit so right now we're at uh, 270 i did the uh, de deposit key money agency fee First month rent, yep, two hundred seventy uh, plus uh, insurance, uh, key changing, uh, cleaning, uh, and uh, wow, there's also one more fee there that I forgot uh, that I can't recall right now. I'm so tired. Uh, yeah, the guarantor company fee. That's it. The guarantor company, uh, again, it's a, it's a kind of thing that us Westerners might ask uh, anyone like, yeah, but why? The guarantor company is needed because uh, like, it's a kind of thing that everyone needs, but nobody wants to be a guarantor. Uh, it means that somebody guarantees uh, that you're going to pay uh, the rent for those two years that you've signed a contract for because as you're a foreigner you can just you know change your mind and go back to your country and then uh you know basically violate the contract that you signed but uh, who's going to come after you no one to be fair uh, but this is also needed for japanese people usually japanese people use their parents as guarantors but as foreigners there's a kind of uh Mm, well, there, there are kind of companies called guarantor companies that, uh, for a fee per contract, guarantee or, or act as your guarantor for, for the duration of the contract. And you have to pay this every time you renew the contract as well. Uh, which is the guarantor company is usually, again, half, um, uh, half your rent. Like uh, for me, it would have been forty thousand again. So I'm at three hundred and ten thousand plus, let's say, fifty thousand for cleaning um, and all that other shizzle. So I'm at uh, three hundred sixty as the initial costs, uh, as the as the initial cost, which is again a very important number. That that is as much as you have to put on the table. Uh, to be able to move into your new flat. If you don't have that kind of money, forget about Japan. You have to have that much money on a Japanese account or uh, or in your hands or in your pocket, whatever. You have to have that much and uh, still you haven't paid utilities yet. Because that comes at the end of every month, obviously. Uh... That's pretty much it. So, if I would have taken that flat, it it, it would have taken me 
360,000 yen and there, there there are even higher ones on the market like I've seen initial cost for 500,000 yen this can be less and if you're on a budget uh, you can make it a little bit less but don't expect to have like maybe 200,000 minus or, or, or build 200,000 yen for initial, for initial costs. You have to have that much money in savings, whatever, just <laughs> it's, not, it's, it's, it's not that easy to move to Japan, especially Tokyo. Uh, so right now um, I, I've received a lot of options and what I'm doing every day uh, until I find something is uh, uh, look at the options that these agents send me, meet with them, go to the offices, have a chat with them. Uh, and uh, once I find something nice, I'm going to meet up with an agent and uh, we go to that uh, the property together, take a look at it. If I like it, then uh, it's usually, it goes very fast. So uh, I have to tell the agent, uh, yes, as soon as uh, I'm sure that I want that flat because other people, we pretty much uh, take it. Like uh, I had a, a meeting today with a lady, and I'll, I said I want to look at three of the options, uh, three from the twelve options that she sent me. And uh, we were talking uh, in the morning, and by the time we actually met at two thirty p.m. in the afternoon, she said that well, uh, there's only one optional left that we can look at because uh, the other two just just went was already gone taken uh yeah pretty much it uh you also have to have a japanese bank account uh to, to start the procedure and you also should have a japanese phone number while some of the agents told me that I have to have one. Some others said that, well, it's it's fine if I don't have a Japanese number. Uh, it's not so hard to get a Japanese number here. Uh, you have to have your alien registration card. You also have to have... Um, uh, you have to have uh, your, your, your current address registered on your alien registration card. Uh, unle uh, other than that, they the bank won't talk to you or or do like a pin reset for you. Like like I have to get a pin reset for my cash card right now. Uh, uh, you cannot get a telephone number um, and stuff like that. Uh, I'm going to talk about how to move in a different episode, probably. Once I get there, but uh, yeah, you have to have a Japanese bank account and a Japanese phone. Also, for a Japanese number, uh, you can go to two different options. Again, that's going to be for a different episode, but uh, you have to have a credit card as well. Cash cards won't do. You have to have a credit card. It can be an overseas credit card. It doesn't matter. But um, yeah, if you enter into a contract... Uh, with uh, calls, uh, SMS, and data usage uh, for a year, uh, which I looked at with uh, Big Sim. That's B I C Sim. I'm probably going to uh, link that in the description below as well. Uh, that's really good, but you have to have a credit card for that. You don't necessarily have to have the credit card uh, on you just need the details and obviously you should have money on it uh, well unless it's, if it's a credit card uh, it can be charged to a minus right but uh, I think it's better to uh, to have a credit card uh, an overseas one as a foreigner as far as I'm concerned uh, as a foreigner you cannot really get a, credit, a Japanese credit card or a credit card uh, on the Japanese bank but I'm going to double check that uh, today is Saturday, tomorrow is Sunday, so uh, banks are only open from Monday for me now. I actually found out that uh, SMBC has a weekend bank uh, on Saturday from uh, 10 to 5, from, from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. 
I just found out on the way back home and I saw it and I was like, oh shit. <laughs> so I missed that opportunity. But uh, that's for a different, uh, that, that's for another episode. And uh, I hope I could give you enough information. Uh, there's also this kind of uh, uh, preference of having no uh, furniture, which I, I would recommend because uh, the apartment is cheaper. And you can pretty much, uh, if you don't mind, like I brought an air bed um, with me. I know I'm crazy, but I I did that because I wanted to get a completely unfurnished flat, which I'm going to pretty much buy stuff for. But a bed is something that you definitely need from day one. I mean, you can get by without a stove uh, or a... Or, um, I don't know, or a chair for a couple of weeks and you can pretty much just go to Craigslist and uh, find something or the Sayonara sales. Uh, or just look online and uh, buy furniture because it's that easy. And uh, the rent gets quite low with unfurnished apartments. Although you can find some cheaper ones furnished, but I prefer to have my own furniture, thank you. Um, and that's pretty much it. Um, I think I've covered everything when it comes to hunting for um, flats or apartments uh, cheap. And I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, yeah, I'm going to try to not f to forget to put as many links in there.